Hello and welcome to Container Bytes. My name is Mofi. I'm a developer advocate at Google focusing on AI workloads on Kubernetes. In this video, I have two very special guests. Hi, uh, my name is Shobit Gupta and I'm a solutions architect at Google Cloud. Hi, uh, I'm Kavitha Rajendran. I'm a solutions architect at Google Cloud. Today, in this video, we are going to show how to reduce your data processing time by 95% using Ray. Let's start with MLOps. MLOps, a short form of machine learning operations, it's a set of practices and tools that aims to fill the gap between data science and DevOps. It aims to streamline the process of deploying, monitoring, and managing machine learning models in production environment. Whenever we talk about machine learning, the life cycle has multiple stages, starting from data processing, model development, model evaluation, model deployment, monitoring, and management. But today's session, we are targeting to uh, talk about data processing. In machine learning, data plays a crucial part. How good is your data will reflect in your model performance. So the data processing, which is the very first stage of machine learning, influences the performance of your machine learning models. Data processing focuses on transforming the data into the form that supports the learning algorithm. As the machine learning models grow larger and larger, the data needed to train the model are also becoming increasingly complex and bigger. Depending on the use case and data, pre-processing stage becomes a bottleneck. Recently, we built a solution for retail customers. One of the challenges we faced during the data processing of building this solution is downloading the images. The data set contained approximately 20,000 entries and every entry had up to seven URLs. We had to split the string, extract the URLs, check whether the URL is valid or not, and then download the images into GCS buckets. This whole process took approximately eight hours. We wanted to improve this time-consuming operation. When we think about this, the first solution comes into our mind is using inbuilt parallelism and Python. We have tried using Python for this activity and after 1000 files, we started seeing the degradation in performance. The next solution that we have come up with is using a distributed computing platform that can execute the function in parallel. Example, Ray. So what is Ray? Ray is an open source unified compute framework that makes it easy to scale AI and Python workloads. Ray consists of a head node and zero or more worker nodes. You can execute an arbitrary Python function in parallel on multiple nodes using Ray. In our use case, we simply use Ray for data processing by distributing the Python function that was downloading the images across multiple Ray workers that achieved parallelism. Let's talk about Ray remote functions. Ray enables arbitrary functions to be executed in an asynchronous fashion on separate Python workers. Such functions are called Ray remote functions and their asynchronous invocations are called Ray tasks. This is a normal Python function that returns the number one. By adding the Ray.remote decorator, a regular Python function becomes a Ray remote function. So as you can see, we are decorating my function with ray.remote. The asynchronous invocation of ray remote function are called ray tasks. To invoke the remote function, use the remote method. This will return an object reference, also known as a future in ray terminology, and then creates a task that will be executed on worker processes. So as you can see in this example, we are creating an object reference by using the remote function. Now, how do we get the results back from the object reference? For that, we have another method called get. We use ray.get to fetch the results back from the object reference. So as you can see in this code snippet, we are calling ray.get on the object reference to collect the results back. In this picture, we have all the components of Ray that we just discussed. We have Ray decorators, Ray remote function, object reference, and a mechanism to collect the result from the object reference. This was the code before we started using Ray. There was a function called getProductImage that accepted a data frame as input parameter. And then it did a bunch of pre-processing to extract the image URLs. And then finally, it passed the required information to another Python function that downloads the images in a serial fashion. And then at the end, 
it does a bunch of post-processing and then finally returns a new data frame. In order to use Ray, we decorated the same function with Ray Remote. Then we created a new function, split data frame. The reason we needed this new function is because we want to divide our data frame into smaller chunks and then pass it along to the multiple threads using Ray workers. We are defining a new function run remote that is calling Ray.init, which specifies which Ray cluster it should be connecting to. The split data frame function returns a list of smaller data frames and we store that in a variable called res. Then we loop through this variable res and invoke the remote function for each of those list elements. And finally, we get the result back using ray.get function. The result of this was that we were able to download 20,000 plus files in just 21 minutes, which was taking over eight hours earlier. Now let's jump onto a demo. So on the screen, two Jupyter notebooks, the one on the left is going to run the download function in a serial fashion. And the Jupyter notebook on the right hand side is going to watch the GCS bucket to see how many objects have been downloaded. So let me go ahead and start the watch function. And it has started to watch the number of objects in the GCS bucket. Now I'm going to invoke the download function and then we will see that the number of files will start to appear on the watch function. So as you can see, the number of files have been increasing now, but this is not super fast. Now we are going to use Ray to execute the same function. On this screen, we have two Jupyter notebooks. The one on the left is going to run the Ray task that downloads the files into our GCS bucket. And on the right hand side, we have a simple code that is going to pull the GCS bucket to see the number of objects in that. So as you can see right now, the number of files in the bucket is zero. And now I'm going to run the Ray task that will start downloading the images or the files in the GCS bucket. The remote task has been initiated and now the number of files in the bucket will start increasing. So as you can see, we already have around 400 files in such a short span of time. And that is now speeding up because the more number of threads are getting uh, the resources. We are already at 5,000 files right now. One more thing that I wanted to show here is the Ray dashboard where you can see the status of the tasks that are actually running under the hood. So when I initiated the Ray task, it created a job here. And if I click on this job, it shows how many threads are supposed to be running and how many of threads are waiting for scheduling. As you can see, there are a total of 101 threads out of which 45 are running and downloading the files. There are 56 threads that are waiting for the resources. As and when the running threads are going to complete, the waiting threads are going to get the resources and change their status into running. As you can see, there are a few tasks that are already finished and it's going to take a few more minutes for all the scheduling tasks to get scheduled, change to running status, and then finally finish. Right now, Ray is using a fixed amount of resources to schedule these threads, but you can always use Ray remote function and supply various parameters like GPUs, CPUs, memory to specify the number of resources that you would want each thread to use. And it can also simulate the node auto scaling on GKE cluster. We just saw how we can use Ray to expedite the data pre-processing time for us. We hope that you find this session useful and you will be able to apply Ray in other areas of MLOps, not just data pre-processing. We will also add some links in the video description that gives you access that you can download and run through to deploy and use Ray. If you have any comments for us or any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. Thank you and have a good one. Thank you.